In the last episode, we sailed to Nassau and explored Atlantis, and we bought cog salad from some colourful locals directly off the back of our dinghy. And we share the essential steps to successfully manage emergencies at sea. In this episode, we race a monohole to the Exumas. We drop in on some endangered iguanas, and we do some undercover research about the Bahamian Viagra. Does it really work? So guys, in the last episode, we were led into the secret of the Bahamian Viagra, and that's in the form of a pistol that is the reproductive organ of the conch and in the conch shell. And we being doctors, we couldn't let that go past us without investigating it further. And testing it out. So in the name of scientific research, <laughs> we went ahead to investigate. So stick around to find out what we found out. So after our early start to get the conch salad, we made our way back out of NASA Harbour the same way we came in, past the derelicts, lighthouse, the empty cruise ship containers, and between the islands on the northeast corner of the island. Even so close to a major harbour, Navigation was very tricky and you had to maintain visual lookouts while following the well-charted channels. Well, we're heading to the Azumas. We're just left Nassau. And at the moment, I'm on watch out on the bow because we're only in about uh, a metre and a half. Sometimes it drops to one metre. And uh, we've got to look out for coral heads and, you know, things sticking out of the water, basically. It's pretty grassy and it's pretty sandy right here. But you still gotta be careful when you make this cut. So we're on the banks and the water's really shallow. No doubt when we get out of, outside this cut here, we'll be putting out the code zero. is a ridiculously blue colour. I hope it comes up on the video because it's just extraordinary. So there's nothing on the chart out here. What else do you want? You want a hand? Do you want a hand? Look, we're on a side. It's a small ball. OK, 
Okay, so here we have the Genoa and the Code Zero up at the same time as well as the main cell. So we're having a beautiful sail. Looks like we're having a bit of a race with the monarch. But I just want to show you how the boat's doing under our Code Zero and main. You can't see the main, but it's behind boom. So we're going from New Providence or Nassau up there, which we anchored in Nassau for the night. And we're going down here to Norman's Key, actually. Highborn's a bit above it, but we're going to Norman's Key under sail alone. There's no current yet because we're on the bank. We are only in 3.9 meters of water, but we're sailing along at about six knots. The wind's actually just picked up to 11 or 12 knots apparent, uh, but generally speaking, we're sailing along in about eight knots of apparent and five knots of boat speed, but now it's gone up to 10 knots, 10 and a half knots of apparent and six and a half knots of boat speed. So that's really pretty good. But certainly when we were doing five and a half knots and eight knots of wind speed that was really quite acceptable for a boat of this size and weight um, and obviously no engine and no current six knots 5.9 knots eight and a half knots or nine knots of apparent wind and of course the wind is our boat speed is actually increasing the apparent wind speed so the real wind speed is actually going to be less than that so that's pretty impressive being able to get five or six knots out of a wind that's probably around only seven or eight knots so we're on route and it's spectacular sea you can see through the water down to the, the sand and the rocks or seagrass and it is just outstanding no fish on the lines yet but we live in hope Bahamas, look at the water behind us. Have a look at the ridiculous colour of the water. It is just sensational. I have never seen water this colour before. I mean, we're sailing here a trip of about 45 miles and the depth of the water is never more than four metres the whole distance and mostly we're running with the depth of only two meters under our under our keel. So because we're um, on the banks, right? Yeah, the we're Great on. Bahama Banks. Here we have conch salad, conch salad omelet. Never had it before. But there's all the conch salad in there, and according to Jimmy, it is to die for. So let's have a go. Okay, we're having conch omelette. So conch. 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 Okay. All right. Bit have a go, mate. Bit of dill. Basil. Bit of basil. Mm. Come on, explain what it's like. Flavors. Give us some flavors. It's got conch, which is kind of a little bit, it's like thicker than calamari. Mm -hmm. but it's delicious, very, um, it's not very fishy, it's only very mild, uh, like calamari type flavor. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, gorgeous. So, on a scale from one to ten, ten being off the scale. As far as armlets go, yeah. one of the best armlets I've ever eaten. Wow! <laughs> that is, that's a big call. Well, there you go, Wilma. Elizabeth's a good cook. Oh, it was a team effort, girl. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, so we are crossing the Bahama Banks, the yellow bank and the white bank between Nassau and the Exumas. And like often happens in the Bahamas, it seems we have light winds. And at the moment, the light winds are from the northeast. So we are sailing along with a few boats in company, also going to the Exumas, obviously. Uh, we're spotting on the front of the, the boat to look for any coral heads or anything sticking up out of the water. We're here at Allen's Key. There's about three different sets of islands that make up Allen's Key, but we're, that's where we are, right in the middle. Sorry, we wanted to share with these guys um, about the sailing community and how awesome the sailing community is. Yeah, look, the sailing community is just phenomenal because if somebody's in trouble, uh, other sailors will go out, put themselves on the line and help them out because we all know what it's like to need help at that in that time of distress. So um, I've found the sailing community is just the most wonderful community in that regards and I wish the rest of the world was like that too. Well that's true but there are people out there that are doing their bit for the world and doing their bit for the community there are. and getting behind other people even though they might not be in the sailing community. <laughs> and one of these guys is, his name is Adam Thompson and he's the lead singer of a band called Chocolate Starfish yeah. and they are awesome. Australian. And yeah and we love these guys, they are Tough Minds ambassadors to start with but we love people that get behind other people and support other people as well. And Adam Thompson, um, he does tireless works with, with the community, with indigenous people, with mental getting health. mental health and really getting behind the community. So we really love this guy. And he's and brought out this song. <laughs> I was going to say that. Called Call Me Out and it's part of a new album called A Beautiful Addiction. So this is all about if you're in distress, call me out and I'll come and help. And yeah. that's, I think, so important for both the sailing community when you're in distress, but also mental health problems. So we are fully 100% behind Adam Thompson and this album and, and a lot of his songs and a lot of his albums over time are all very uh, motivational and very uplifting. uplifting and yeah. helpful, helping each other out. Yeah. So we'd like you to have a listen to it here and download it from Spotify. So we really love this guy. So get behind someone who gets behind other Everybody people. Everybody else, absolutely. We're really excited to see these iguanas called the Northern Bahamian Rock Iguanas because they're only found on three islands in the Bahamas. Like any wild critters, these fellows have to be approached with caution. Some visitors have been really shocked with these iguanas actually running full pelt and jumping on them only because they've got food. If you visit these guys, don't throw any food on the sand because these guys can't digest the food and it really upsets their digestive system. And this might be the reason why they're endangered. A good time to see them is in daylight hours as they love the sunshine just like all the visitors.
So this is a very romantic spot. Beautiful. We've got a beautiful beach in front of us and we're all, all by, by ourselves. ourselves. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Very romantic, which leads me to our topic. Of aphrodisiacs. That's right. And I mean, we featured aphrodisiacs, the conch pistol. Basically, it's this long, slender, tuby thing. It's the reproductive organ of the conch. It's the Bahamian Viagra, it actually. Is. That's what it's known as. And, and that have, just got my attention. It did. <laughs> and I wanted to know whether it's true or not. And so she tested it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, first I had to taste it. Yeah, who wants this one? Ellie? Yeah, yeah come yeah. on, Ellie. Oh, I, don't know if I, oh, I don't know if I can. <laughs> <laughs> I might gag. Yeah, like. you won't gag. It's really tasty. Well, do it before you swallow it. That'll make you feel good. No, no, don't take a little bit. You've got to suck it all in. Uh, no, I'll, I'll try. I can't, I can't do all that. Oh, it's too big for me. <laughs> That's solid protein. That's very um. Fibrous. Mm. It's like gelatin. Mm. Go and suck it all up, honey. <laughs> I missed it. <laughs> oh, you don't. You can get <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> rerun. Pretend it's spaghetti. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> 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 it won't go down. <laughs> It won't go down. <laughs> yeah, baby. You guys will end up wearing all the slopping as it's going around. I can't. It, it won't go down. <laughs> That's its fault. Is it's there got, any, other, got... any other takers? <laughs> <laughs> For a partially digested pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Sucks, chewed. Bitten. Yeah. No, I can. I can feel those other little bits right there. So. Um, Maybe give it to the sharks then. Yeah, I think, I think, okay. Here we go. Give <laughs> me right there. <laughs> <laughs> what does that taste like? It's salty. The Bahamians swear that it is an aphrodisiac and it is true. And they eat it with gusto, with huge amount of pleasure, and they never throw away the pistol. Mm -mm. So because of this, we really had to look into it a bit further. So we looked up and did a bit of research to find out, in fact, there had been no specific research done on the conch as an aphrodisiac. So it was neither proven to be true or proven to be untrue, except there is a doctor in the Bahamas that states that it is absolutely the truth. Um, but again, no sound research evidence. Some train of thought is that through through food, which is what the aphrodisiacs are, um, that particular food has this effect on your libido, uh, libido your and, drive. Your, yeah, and your passion. And oysters are a common one that uh, that are thought to be the are thought to be aphrodisiacs, but there are a number in all in all cultures there are actually things that be a Spanish fly. Mm. So going, just going back to oysters, they fall into the the food group where any food that represents the sexual organs, sexual organs in, a, in a physical way, like, dare I say, banana, um, you know, carrots, um, any cu anything anything long, obviously. But go back to the oysters. You kind of well, the oysters, delicately <laughs> avoided why the, that is an aphrodisiac. The oysters possibly. fall into the category um, that, you know... Anatomically, it's like a part of the female anatomy yes which shall remain nameless yes and and that is supposedly why the oysters have such because a because this is a family show <laughs> as such an effect rather than anything that's any substance that is actually within the oyster itself so and then there's other things like other people uh, believe that uh, the aphrodisiac is the part that if you are eating another animal or another say eggs for instance that are part of that reproduction process, process. Yeah. fish eggs yeah. chicken eggs um, or even animals genitalia yeah. or yeah. reproductive organs yep. is supposed to be the aphrodisiac 
And then the other thing just to mention quickly is uh, certain foods contain chemicals which make you feel good and if you feel good obviously you're going to have more likelihood of wanting to go ahead and perform other good acts so serotonin is the common one for that mm -hmm. and there's a multitude of foods that that uh, work for that which includes eggs uh, brown and green tea salmon, tuna salmon dark chocolate anchovies, almonds, um, ape, um Avocados. Uh, avocados yeah. um, so a whole range of foods stimulate berries. serotonin and uh, berries. That's right. Yeah. And basically, will will also enhance your drive. Mm -hmm. um, but in our view, the most important, well, in my view, I think it's your view too. Mm -hmm. Probably the most powerful thing that can improve your drive is actually this thing up here, which is your brain. And if you believe it's going to work. The likelihood is it's going to work because that's what you believe. Well, that falls into the category of placebo, right? So that's the other thing is some people say, well, it's just a placebo effect. Well, placebo has proven to be so powerful that sometimes it outperforms <laughs> drugs, it outperforms, it you know, anything. Because if you believe something is going to work on something is, you know, people can heal themselves of you know, terrible diseases and things like that if they only believe 100% that it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen, isn't it? Yeah. But you know what? At the end of the day, I think I will choose to believe that there is such a thing as aphrodisiacs and they're found all over the planet and they're in all sorts of food and in all sorts of situations. And we will enjoy them with gusto. That's right. So, and because really, if you, whether you think there is or whether you think there isn't, either way, you'll be right, won't you? That's right. So if you think it's going to work, it probably will. And if you don't think it's going to work, it, it probably definitely won't. Well, it definitely won't. That's right. <laughs> But what about the pistol? <laughs> well, I attempted several times to eat the pistol and it is the most rubbery. Uh, it's it's like it's spaghetti like, so it's kind of solid but not solid enough and you you have to suck it in like spaghetti, but then at some point you have to chew it and Honestly, it was escaping my teeth all over the place. I just couldn't chomp down on it. And it was so rubbery and so salty. And so I thought, I'll just swallow it whole. And then I just about Not choked good... myself. <laughs> and it was hilarious. So, it was hilarious. Um, yeah, my. Anyway, I ate the pistol. You did, yeah. And. And you know, I didn't notice anything. And any we difference. danced off. <laughs> Okay, no, go again, go again. <laughs> Rewind. So. I was meaning that you're already up here libido-wise. It couldn't improve anymore. Sorry. So what were, you, what were you wanting to end with? So I ate the pistol. Yes. And we danced off into the sunset. And we'll leave the rest to your imagination. So guys, if you have liked this episode, please subscribe. So ding the subscribe button because it really does help our channel like you wouldn't believe. And ding the like button and the notification button so you get notified when another video is coming out. She's making you ding everything. You <laughs> click the like button, you hit the subscribe button and you ding the dong. <laughs> anyway guys, Hope you've liked this episode. Until next week, we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Love ya.